Welcome to module 1 of this course. We are going to take start from a very scratch so that it will be easy for you to move on even if you are a complete beginner in statistics and data science. Let's begin with the definition of a data. As per Oxford English Dictionary, there are the two different definitions of a data. The first one is philosophical one, while the second one is a technical one. Let's first explore the philosophical definition of a data. As per this definition, things known or assumed as a fact, making basis of reasoning or the calculation, is known as data. In simple words, the things which help you to understand some phenomena around you is called a data in philosophical term. As you know that currently we are living in an age of technology. So with the context to the technology, we have a bit different definition of a data. And that is the quantities, characters or symbols on which operations are performed by the computers and which may be stored and transmitted in the form of electrical signals and recorded on a media is known as data. In simple words, the video which right now you are watching, the newspaper which you read and the calculations you have done on an excel sheet and everything which you have seen or experienced on the internet is a data. Now at this stage, it's good to have an idea about another very important term, which is a big data. Let's try to understand this term by taking a one example. On 1st October 1990, the Human Genome Project was initiated by the US government. During this project, the tons of the sequencing data is produced, which is deposited in an NCBI nucleotide database. This is a huge amount of data. And interestingly, so far most of the human genome data is still unexplored. Similarly, like a human genome data, we have a many other huge data sets deposited into the databases. Such data is known as a big data due to its large size. Here you can ask a question that why we don't have a big data in the past? The answer to this question is pretty simple. The current development in the new technologies has enabled us to gather a huge amount of information which was not possible a few decades back. Now, if you have a big data, then you need to have the tools to analyze and comprehend it. And the statistics provides you such tools. In this course, we will try to equip you with all of the necessary statistical tools which may help you to analyze your big data. So stay with us in this exciting journey. We hope now you will have a good understanding about data. Well, let's talk about some basic characteristics of the data. The understanding of these characteristics will help you to properly visualize and analyze the data. So let's begin. Commonly, the values present in the data are known as variables. Broadly, there could be the two different type of variables in our data. The one type of the variables are known as numeric variables, while the other type of the variables are known as categorical variables. Let's first talk about the numeric variables. The numeric variables are in a form of numbers like 1, 2, 3 and etc. On numeric data, we can perform a different type of arithmetic functions. For example, we can sum the numeric variables, we can take an average of them, we can multiply them and we can divide them and so on. We can further classify the numeric data into the two different types. The one type of the numeric data is known as the continuous numeric data while another type is known as the discrete numeric data. The continuous numeric data is basically a measurable numeric data. For instance, the height of the students or the distance between the two cities. It is not mandatory that the continuous numeric data is always in a whole number. This data can be in decimals. For instance, the height of the students could be 6 feet or it could be 6.3 feet as well. We hope this will be clear to you now. Now let's talk about the discrete numeric data. The discrete numeric data is normally a countable data. For instance, the total number of the chairs in the classroom or the total number of the books at the shelf. The discrete numeric data is always in a whole number. It cannot be in decimals. For example, the total number of the chairs in the classroom can be 20, but it cannot be 20.5. We hope so that this will be also clear in your mind as well. In the next video, we will talk about the categorical data. In this video, we will talk about the categorical data. The categorical data have a finite or the limited number of possibilities. For instance, the data about the genders in a population. As you know, commonly there can be only a three different types of the gender in population. Male, female and transgenders. 
Similarly, let's assume you have a data about the grades of the students as an excellent, good, average and poor. All of such type of the data are known as the categorical data. In simple words, the data which will have a certain categories will be considered as a categorical data. The categorical data can be further classified into the two different types. The one is known as ordinal categorical data and the simple categorical data. The ordinal categorical data will have an inherent ordering. For example, the grades of the students from excellent to poor have an order. The high scoring students will be in a higher order while the low scoring mark students will be in a lower order. Similarly, the speed of the car can be in three different orders like low, medium or high. In simple categorical data, we don't have any inherent ordering. Anything can come first. For example, the gender data will be a simple categorical data. Male, female and the transgenders are equal and anybody can come first. We hope this will be clear to you. Now there is need to understand one very important term here which is known as factor. The factor holds the categorical data in form of either numeric values or the characters. You may be confused about that stuff, but don't be. Very shortly it will be clear to you. Take an example that you are going to conduct a survey and there is a gender column in your data collection form. Rather than writing down the male and the female to specify the gender of the participant, you decided to write one for the male and the two for the females. Although one and the two are the numeric values, but basically during the data analysis, these will be considered as the categorical data. Such values in the data are also known as the factor. We hope so that now you will have a good idea about the categorical and the factor term.